Hi, I'm Cody Smith, and this video is about me wiring, or really rewiring, my 1964 Mercury Monterey convertible. Very similar to a 1964 Galaxy, uh, pretty much the same car, but these principles about what I'm doing will work on just about any car. If you have an old carbureted beast like this and you're adding fuel injection, electric fuel pumps, fans, um, other electric components, this one has an electric transmission now, so that needed a source of power. So what I'm going to show you is how you can adapt your factory wiring without gutting and rewiring the whole car to do that safely and effectively without overloading what's already here. So to start with, it looks like a mess, but um, I am going to loom up everything here. And what we're going to be left with is one um, nice black loomed run that goes down this fender well, one nice loomed run that goes down this fender well, and one around the back. And that's all you're gonna see. Um, down here under the radiator, there's another one too. Obviously with the radiator there, you won't see that one, but that'll all get loomed up as well. Uh, I wanted to show you this now before it's pretty so that you can see everything as it is. All right, the big thing. Uh, first was converting to a 3G alternator. I have a whole nother video on that. But when you do so, you need to add a maxi fuse. Um, so I think this is a 150 amp or so maxi fuse here that protects between the battery and the alternator. All right, so with that, one for the Phytec battery positive, uh, that goes right from uh, the feed side of the fuse over to the Phytec, which it has another fuse over there. So I'm really, it's a little redundant there. Um, but also coming down from here, uh, one this one goes to the alternator, one goes to the Phytec. So it's really the same as a battery source. This goes, um, you can see the battery comes in here. It goes through the fuse and then to the Phytec. So that's about as close as you're gonna get to connecting it right to the battery, but you don't have to have that wire up there on the terminal. I prefer this and it's really just as close. So then the other wire coming down, that goes to my auxiliary fuse box. And this is a paintless um, fuse box. The nice thing here is, so you bring in uh, the main power wire, which is coming straight from the battery, from the fuse side. And now you have all these fuses to run all the new components. It really has its own new harness for all the new stuff. Uh, one side is constant power. One side is switch power. So I've gone back to the ignition switch. And on this one, so the only wire you have that's really hot during run and when cranking, which is what you need for the Phytec and the GoSpark and the transmission controller, all of that, you want it hot the whole time. The only one you have for that uh, is the red and green wire that comes out of the ignition switch. It goes straight from the ignition switch to a bullet connector, and that bullet connector goes to a pink wire. That pink wire is the resistance wire in one of these cars. Some other cars you might have a ballast resistor, anything with a um, old point style distributor and coil, you're gonna have some ignition resistance. Now for this setup, you wanna bypass that. You aren't going to be able to run timing control, especially if you have that resistance. So from that green red wire coming out of the ignition switch, I just unplugged the pink wire, plugged in a new bullet connector to a new wire, and that comes out of this bulkhead fitting here. So for items that need a switched source, it's the Phytec, the uh, CD ignition here, capacitive discharge ignition, and the transmission. And that's a lot of burden to put on uh, just the ignition switch circuit, because that's already doing, you know, ignition. Um, so I wanted to separate that. So now all that does is it turns on half of this little fuse panel. Half of this fuse panel, ha it has a relay here. Over here is a relay. So all that switch does is close a relay. Now once that relay is closed, everything's just running off this uh, nice 10 gauge wire coming down to it. Plenty of capacity there. I'm going to cover that back up. Uh, this also has its own circuit breaker. I don't know if you yeah, right. Here's a better view with better lighting of the fuse box, the relay that goes to the fuse box. 
the circuit breaker that protects the entire fuse box, and the other half, grounding. So I bought this ground lug, and basically this is going to tie the ground of the battery to the ground for the Phytech, to the ground from the engine block and uh, chassis, and then all the other um, miscellaneous grounds I need for um, the relays, uh, for the ignition, everything's going to go to this one lug and be really well tied in with all the other grounds. Over here in red, so I believe the total capacity of this thing is like 40 or 50 amps and it has a circuit breaker to match to protect it. Even besides the fuses there, besides the fuses here. So everything's well protected. So like I said, half um, switches on with a relay with switched power and half is constant. The constant is able to power things that have their own relays like the fan and the fuel pump. Now what I've heard is the main reason if the Phytech ECU fails, it's because of that fuel pump relay. It's a big amp draw that is being fed out of here if you go direct from the Phytech to the fuel pump. So that's why I'm running the fuel pump wire just as a trigger to the relay, um, this relay, and then the relay is actually providing the power right from the fuse box. Um, I gotta learn how to aim my camera right from the fuse box um, to that relay and then the relay powers the fuel pump. Now the fuel pump's in the back. So as I said, I have five new components that all need power. So constant hot would be uh, the fan and the fuel pump. And then the other three are the Phytech, the Ghost Spark Ignition. And this is a Ghost Spark Ignition. I just 3D printed a little cover to make it um, look more like it belongs in this car. And then uh, I also have an AODE electronic overdrive transmission in here. So it has a transmission controller and that needs switch power as well. So all of those are being fed off of the new fuse box, not placing any additional demand on any of the factory components. Now to get through the firewall, Instead of just drilling a hole and using a grommet, um, I'm using this bulkhead fitting. I got this from Summit if you just search electrical bulkhead fittings. And one side will have the female plugs and it plugs in, um, you know, from the inside. And then um, you make this up as a plug harness on the other side. Just make sure your wires line up. That way everything's nice and clean. Um, this is for the transmission controller, the switch power coming out. Um, the transmission controller also needed a throttle position sensor. Um, so that's what this light green one here is. But all nice and sanitary with just a few wires going through there. And really, if I was doing this again and just running the Phytech, I think I would do the same thing again with um, the auxiliary fuse box just to unload the ignition switch, the Phytech, and the fuel pump to its own fused harness, and of course using relays for the fan and fuel pump. So if you're doing this project um, similarly, I hope this helps. I hope it gives you an idea of maybe some other components you may need to purchase when you're doing something like this. Get your relays right away. Uh, make sure you're alternator or generator that you have in your car can handle all the new electrical demands you have. Um, my old 1G wasn't keeping up with this. I was getting battery drain and then the car wouldn't run well. Um, so if you have to switch your alternator, then plan for that. Plan, you know, as much of your wiring as you can and make yourself a wiring diagram. Now I have a copy of this on my phone, but I just keep referring to it pretty easy. Microsoft Paint. Take a screenshot if you need to. There's a bit of writing on there, but that's basically what it looks like. Um, I'd love to tell you this is all working great, but hopefully I'm going to be able to fire this up tomorrow.